Hello Internet! Today we're going to be looking at Python. Specifically, we're going to be looking at making a website or web server in Python. So I've been learning Python myself just because it, it's a handy little language to know. Uh, and one of the things that I kind of stumbled across is Flask, which is a very minimal Python web server. And so it lets you set up a web server in Python in literally less than 10 lines of code, which is super useful. Uh, and the thing is, is it works across platforms, I think. I've got it working on a Mac before and on uh, Linux, but I have never gotten it working on Windows. I've never tried. So I figure that's what we're going to try. It should be really quick and it's effectively just going to be hello world in Flask. So I guess we'll, we'll get right to it. I have, a, I have some of the, the code documentation because I don't really know the, uh, the keywords and stuff and I don't have code completion and stuff in Visual Studio Code, uh, but we're just going to work through this and get there. So the first thing we need to do is import our packages. It's the same thing as like importing namespaces or packages in Java. Uh, so the way this works is we're going to say from Flask. So Flask is our name. It's, it's the package we're actually using. So we're actually going to import Flask, and then we're actually going to import the Flask class from that, the Flask object uh, class. Classes and objects are slightly different. Anyway, uh -huh. so the, effectively that's saying there's something called Flask.Flask, .flask, which is in the Flask package, there's a class called Flask, which is slightly confusing, and this is supposed to be capitalized. That's why we have the documentation open. Uh -huh. And so this is just going to pull that package in and let you actually see it. So what we need to do then is actually create our app. And so our app is going to be equal to a flask with our name. And so this is going to be the name of what we're running. So when you execute this, this is called hello flask. So I would do uh, hello flask.py. And so I already have Python installed. You can install it from uh, Chocolatey or just from their website. They have a installer. And so if I just want to do like a really basic example of this working, uh, comments are hashes. We'll do like something like print hello world, basic hello world program. There's no semicolons in Python. Ah, huh. I'm in the wrong directory. Uh, so let's go into our web server. That would probably help and rerun that and we'll get hello world. And so if I print out the name here, so if I do uh, percent %s, this is going to be some uh, string interpolation. If I just do our name here like this, it's going to replace that percent %s with the first argument in this list, which happens to be underscore name. If I wanted to add another one, I would just put another comma here and do the next one. We don't need that yet, uh, so we can just do that. And if I rerun this, we get main. Is that what I expected? I think that's what I expect. Still kind of figuring out that whole name thing, uh, but the reason you do this, the point of that uh, name variable, is that changes. If you import this, uh, so this Flask package is going to see something different than what you would see here. So that that's sort of the point is it kind of allows you to import packages and allows those to kind of see what's actually running. Anyway, I am not super, super skilled in that. So I'm not really going to talk about it too much because I don't know much about it. But this is everything we need to get our, our web service running. What we do need, though, is we need a uh, what's this called app route. And so let's just create a default app route and uh, we're going to call it, say, hello. Uh, this is just going to be our hello world. So we're going to pass in hello. This is how you would define a function. You, you use a uh, def and then give it the function name followed by a colon. And then everything else after following that colon that is part of that function is going to be on a new line uh, and it's going to be tabbed. And so that's sort of how this whole thing works is it's all tab delimited, not uh, there's no curly brackets or anything like that. It's all tabs. And so all we need to do here is actually return whatever we want. So if I want to return hello world, 
there we go. Now we're returning <laughs> hello world. And so hopefully, aha, if I did all of this right, I should be able to run this. Ah, huh. syntax things. You, you need the, the, the brackets there so you actually have arguments, otherwise it doesn't really work. Now we're getting to the error that I was expecting to run into there. <laughs> and so this is saying no module name Flask is found because Flask doesn't exist. Flask is a package that we don't have. Python doesn't know everything that could exist for Python. Uh, so you have to kind of tell it. You have to say, download this, do this. It's sort of like uh, you need something like NuGet if you're familiar with C Sharp. And so the way that works is there's something called pip, which is so uh, pip is sort of the Python package manager. And it does everything that you would do in NuGet or in Node, like the NPM package manager. Uh, that's redundant. But anyway, you, you get the idea. It's, it's a package manager. It downloads packages that other people have made. In this case, I'm going to tell it to download Flask. Uh, there's a lot of packages named Flask, but the one that's just called Flask works. There's a bunch of extensions for this. I think it's capitalized, but I don't think it matters. We'll do it capitalized. But anyway, what this is going to do, uh, assuming it works, I've never actually run pip on this computer before, so we're going to find out. Uh, and I'm not in a upgraded shell, so who knows if I have permission to write wherever this is writing. <laughs> but yeah, okay, awesome. So that worked. So you can see it downloaded a whole bunch of fun things. These are all of the uh, packages and dependencies. Flask uh, uses Jinja, which is a Python tool for actually uh, interpolating web pages. So if you've ever used uh, Razor web pages in .NET, I don't know what the Java equivalent is, but if you use things like that, this is that, but in Python. Uh, so I've used that a little bit, but anyway, that's all there. We should now have Flask. So if I rerun this, why did it stop? It should, it's not supposed to stop. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> this is interesting. This isn't how I got it working previously, so I'm a little bit confused. Uh, but there's that uh, pip package installed a new command called flask. Uh, so that's what this is here. Ignore that. <laughs> and so effectively what we have to do is do set uh, flask app equal to our Python script. And then we have to run it through this flask command. So we set our variable, which is saying this is the app to run. So set flask app equal to hello flask. And then we should do flask.run. And so this should read that environment variable and then execute it. But apparently, I need to point it to the full path. Is that what it, is, is that what it wants? Huh, that's interesting. So their, their documentation, at least on their, their main page, is not correct. It's designed for Linux. And so you have to kind of mess with this a little bit. This appears to be correct, but it's not working. Uh, so what happens if I do that debug equals one and then try that flask run? Do I need to, to group all of them? Does Windows do that weird thing where... Uh, let's see if I can remember. <laughs> It has been a long time since I've screwed around with environment variables in Windows. Okay, I don't think it's defined. So, what is the best way to do this? Let's try it all in one line, shall we? So if I set that with hello flask.py and then do flask run, we get a whole bunch of errors because I'm doing that wrong. 
this was supposed to be quick and easy. It's not. <laughs> um, I'm missing something, and I don't know what it is. I'm suspecting. I had a lot of trouble actually getting Python installed on my machine. Uh, part of that was my fault because I forgot to restart my shell. Uh, part of it was also it kept like uninstalling for whatever reason or the commands would not be found afterwards, which was a little bit weird. So. I'm not runs a shell in the app context. There's a help. I don't think this is enough for us to get this working. So what I'm going to do is actually create a new startup uh, dot sh. Sure, that's not what I meant. That's not what those are called in Windows, but we're going to do it anyway. And we're just going to create this here. And so this is going to be our hello flask dot pi. And then we're going to do flask run. And so this is sort of defining, uh, here's our environment variable, here's our flask thing. And hopefully that means we don't lose it like we are. Uh, so if I run that startup, how do I want to open it? I want to uh, execute it. Okay. <laughs> there. How's that? Better? Yes, awesome. Okay, so that actually worked. It actually did the thing that I wanted it to do. Uh, so now Flask is running, it's on port 5000. So if I go here and just hit that 127.001 port 5000, this is Postman, which is a, a way to do REST calls in uh, just anything. Uh, so if you need to call a web service, this does it really easily. I'm doing a git against that port. And we're getting back hello world, which is what we wanted, which means this is working. Now, what I want to be able to do is say uh, name equals Sam or world of zero. So if I say my name is equal to world of zero and send that, we still get back a normal response, but it just says hello world and not hello world of zero. The next thing that I want to do is actually enable these requests to have a name. And so there's one more thing that we need to add. We need to import uh, requests, request. <laughs> so I will post a link to some documentation I found on how to do this uh, because I kind of had to look this up myself quickly because I've never actually done this. I, I've used this mostly for serving the static web pages with some uh, custom stuff. So I have, I have this talk to an API, which then serves up a web page with that API's result. Now I need to actually accept requests. Uh, and so this is a little bit different than, like if you say Spring in Java or ASP.NET, you would add parameters up here in the hello method. That's how, that's how you would normally do this. This is a little bit more lightweight and scripty. Uh, so there's a request.args, uh, and I believe it's a get, yes. And so we get the name of our thing. So if I pull out the name and say, my name is equal to this, and then we'll do that uh, string interpolation again. And so we'll just plug in our name, and now, I think, huh, I don't think we need to do anything else. Yes, we do. I need to restart that. Dang. <laughs> Terminate batch job. Yes. All right, so if we restart this now, open up Postman again and send this, we'll get hello world of zero, which means we're actually reading that parameter in and actually being able to act on it. We're not really doing anything useful with it, but we're able to see it and actually do whatever we need with it. Uh, so that's Flask in a nutshell uh, on on Windows. It's it's interesting. This was more this was way different than what I did on on my Mac. I, I was able to just do Python and run my script, and it just worked. 
I may, is that just not the right way? I'm confused now. Maybe, I don't know, maybe something's going on. I'll have to check that out. But that's, that's how you do it. <laughs> I don't know. Let me know what you think. It's, it's simple. Like everything we have here, these six lines of code is a full web server. So that's nice. It's super slim. It's super lightweight. It's really easy to get started. You can stand that up in seconds. But on the other hand, it's a little bit, it, it is minimal. Uh, and so there's not all of that, for all the frameworks and stuff that you would get if you use Spring or if you used ASP.NET or, or other things like that. Uh, so there, there's some trade-offs there. So I, I, I want to know what you guys think, I guess. Uh, do you like this or, or do you prefer something that's a little bit more strict and verbose? Uh, so let me know in the comments and I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. But that's it for this video. So if you guys have any feedback for me, let me know in the comments as well and I'll take a look at those. But other than that, I will see you guys in the next video. So till then, see you internet.